This video is going to be in regards to how to jack up your car in all four corners on jack stands. This was at the request of a viewer. I figured this would be a good opportunity right now because I'm about to take off all four rims. So um, I'm going to show you uh, how I do it. It's not necessarily the the recommended way officially from BMW as far as I understand. If you look it up online, you'll see guidance on how to do it, but uh, I don't necessarily agree with how it's shown. Maybe the way that I've, uh, maybe the way I'm going to show you will be frowned upon. I don't know. I've been doing it fine since I've had this car, but I find it a lot more safe and stable to do it this way um, if you just have like a basic jack. So the official way that I've found online to jack it up is they say get a floor jacks, uh, put it under the middle of the front of the car. If you look back there, there'll be a hole in the under tray and there'll be a metal support that you can use to jack up the car. I actually will put a clip in here showing you what happens when you try to do that with a, an average jack, something like this. It's not a bad jack, it's actually better than, uh, you know, I would say the average person would have at home. They usually buy those $30 small jacks, they're about half as long. And if you try to do that, first of all, you'll have trouble even getting the arm out far enough to get any leverage, but you'll, you'll probably want to lean one way or the other, and yet you run the risk of the jack actually toppling over on itself because the weight isn't perfectly balanced, and it's not my preferred method of doing it. So I'm going to show you what I do. Here's a shot of under of where we're going to be placing the jack right here. There's one back there. There's one at all four corners of your car. So I'm going to place the jack on that. It's about here, just behind the, bo the body line for the door. So I've set my floor jack right in the middle of that, uh, that joint uh, support. They make a tool you can buy, it looks like a hockey puck and it just goes right in there just to get a more even distribution on it. They've been used this way many times well before I ever got the car. So they're not in mint condition, but it's fine. So I usually go as high as the jack can. Like for instance, recently I changed my transmission fluid and I wanted to get as much room underneath it as possible to slide under with a with the creeper, so the higher the better. So there you can hear, it's, it's maxed out. And I'll show you where to place the jack stand now. Now they got the car up in the air. You can see right there that square hole is where you would normally put the jack. And then they recommend that you put jack stands at the actual lift points where my jack is now. Obviously I can't do that because of the fact that my jack is jacking from there. So I'll show you where I place my jack stand. So I got my jack stand. If you see right here this arm. Just like that. That's the arm that one of the control arms that goes to the subframe. That's aluminum. So now we'll lower the, the car onto it. See? If I was just working at this one corner, very stable point to jack and otherwise you'd be jacking from the front it would be very sketchy when you're trying to jack up the car they recommend that you jack up in the middle and then place your jack stand right here and then they recommend that you go to the rear of the car and go in the rear diff and jack up the car together and then uh, put your jack stand on the actual jack point 
Um, like I said, I don't do it. This is a decent jack, but you need something really long. You need one of those jacks that's like from here, super long with a huge handle. Usually body shops or really um, professional shops would own one of those. They're like four or $500. And then you can do it nice and stable and lift up the whole front end because you got lots of support area on your jack. For your average guy at home, your DIYer, going online and searching for how to safely jack up uh, an E90 may mislead you because um, you may be you may be putting yourself in danger jacking up the car by that small little single point and expecting that thing to stay planted on the ground and stable with such a small footprint. So that's why I don't do it that way. Do I like the fact that I'm putting it on my control arm? putting the bushings under stress honestly i'm good with it it's been fine you know maybe someone's going to chime in and say no no if you're going to try this at home go buy a 400 hundred dollar jack but at the end of the day you guys aren't going to do that if you're doing this at home you want a cheap effective way to do it safely if you had a 20 dollar harbor free special tiny jack much smaller than this going on that jack point is always a good stable place no matter what and you don't have the car trying to shift weight and become really sketch so I'm going to do it on the rear now and I'll show you where I place my jack stand. And another reason why I'm good with doing it this way is I'm not putting um, my jack stands on plastic that can potentially crumble and bend anyway. I'm putting it, my jack stands are ending up on metal, structural points of the car. So I prefer this. So we'll get set up at the rear now and jack up the rear. And just to show, that's the condition of my jack pad. Doing it this way, it's not deformed or anything really. It's in good shape. You get a nice, you get a nice uh, contact patch using this type of jack. Those small bottle jacks or the smaller jacks with a small area maybe may require the puck. You can buy one of these jacks for like 80 bucks at Harbor Freight. And while I'm jacking up here, based on my jack stand placement, I won't see my. Uh, jack stand skipping around or moving it doesn't like start to tilt or like pull away because of where i place my jack stand it, it stays dead flat on the ground i can go around all four corners safely and not have the jack stand shift and move that's why i like this method so i'll show you where i place my other jack stand now so now go in front of the rear wheel and you can see right there Right there is where I placed it. Lowering the weight. So when you do this, you want to make sure that all the feet on your jack stand stay flat on the ground. There we go. Now we can lower it up more. There. So now I have this side jacked up evenly and we'll go around to the other side. Now here we are on the passenger side. I recommend you do the rear before you go do the front. It just helps with a more even lift. Because I don't know if you can tell here. But it just looks like it's crazy lean down on this side and way up on that side. It seems like you got to carry the whole weight of the vehicle on this one point to get things level. This chassis is stiff enough that lifting here will actually lift that one up evenly and you barely need to even lift it after. But um, same story here, jack it up via the jack pad and then I'll show you as I'm lifting. Okay. That's why I like to place my jack stands where I did because doing this doesn't cause them to shift around or pick up at an awkward angle and lose their support. Pretty 
air control somewhere up there. If you notice, it basically lifted up that front end because modern cars are much more stiff. Okay, we're on the passenger side rear now. Looking for that same point to jack at. Place the jack stand right there. You can see right there. That's a good strong point. And there's lots of uh, surface area. That came down a bit harder because I was one handing it, but it still landed right on its point. If you look at the other jacks, they're all level. So, and you notice we're basically jacked up on this side. It's even just with the three. So there's no support here now. Even so, it's rock solid. This is the final point now. It doesn't really go very high at all. Just enough to place our jack stand up at the front now. Here we are up at the front. And here's where that's where I place it. Do this with your hands because you want to really control that down. So very gently put the weight on the jack stand to the point where you could pull this out if you needed to. And then just get it bottomed out, just touching for added support. And before you go into the car. from the tire, give the car a really good, it doesn't move at all. It moves less than it would on, a, on an actual four post lift. So you got four points plus a, a fifth point just for added safety, it's extremely stable. You can see the feet of the jack stands are all uniformly touching the ground. If you're working on um, asphalt, they may sink in a bit, just be conscious of that. But I got all the working room I would need to perform any work underneath the car. So, that shows you how I jack up my car. I find it to be extremely stable and I've never had any problems. I'm contacting metal points on the car, not plastic jack pads. I feel better about that. Uh, I get a more stable lift when I'm using a small jack like that. And again, I'll show you a small clip of what happens when you try it on that front metal post um, as, as recommended by BMW because you're gonna have a hard time distributing all the weight on the one you know it's gonna want to rock one way or the other if you go high enough your jack could literally tip over while you're lifting and you can get hurt I don't let jack if you want to do it from the rear with that type of jack you'll have a better chance on the rear diff but this, this is just like kind of a no-brainer. Those jack points, the balance, the balance of the car is set in such a way that you can do one side at a time in a very stable manner because they're meant to, uh, for non-run flat cars, they're meant to actually use the, the crappy jack that comes with these cars. Um, I don't even know if some of these came without run flats, but basically um, it's, a, it's a stable point. So that's how you jack up your E90 or E92, uh, all four corners set on jack stands so thanks for watching and good luck